You wanna have some fish, but what are you gonna do? Have the exact same recipe that they sell at every single restaurant out there? Oh, we're gonna do so much better than that. First thing we have to do is to peel three to four mangoes and get ripe ones, please. The base of the sauce is the sweetness of the mango. So if you can get your hands on gold honey mangoes, they're the way to go. Oh, I've said mangoes so many times already. Cut the cheeks off the mangoes and cut the extra fruit attached to the pit. Dice the mangoes, but there's no need to make it fine as we're gonna blend this at the end anyway. Store in a bowl at least 30 minutes ahead of time, add salt and mix to draw out the juices and exaggerate the sweetness. Next, go ahead and peel a one inch knob of ginger, which you can surprisingly do with just a spoon. After that, cut into slices, but don't make it too thin as we want nothing to burn while we're reducing the sauce. Now for the most important ingredient, pick 10 to 15 leaves of fresh mint and store for later. Finally, we get to make this sauce. Start by getting your pan to medium low temperature and pour your diced mangoes in. Make sure to also get all the leek juices as well. Follow that with the sliced ginger and give it a stir for about 30 seconds until you barely see the signs of simmering. Immediately hit it with a splash of water, we want nothing to burn here, and then add in about 3 tablespoons of sugar. The goal is to reduce this into a syrupy consistency. Once thickened, add half a can of coconut milk to make the sauce creamier. You can also use heavy cream at this step, but I thought I might as well keep it healthy for some reason. Lastly, use any white wine you have lying around to fortify the flavors. I saw this mango wine at the store and well, it tastes like mangoes, which is weird, but go ahead and add half a cup of that to your sauce and continue to let it simmer for the next 15, 20 minutes. Once thickened, go ahead and pour all your sauce into your blender without trying to spill everything. Now blend on high as you're smacked in the face with that sweet mangoey ginger aroma. It's only at this point when we're gonna add in the fresh mint leaves and what the heck, throw in a couple basil leaves in there too. I generally don't like to cook with a lot of heat when it comes to these herbs because it tempers their taste and smell. Lastly, as all good things have, add two tablespoons of cold butter to the blender and blend until glossy and smooth. Pass the liquid gold through a fine mesh strainer to remove any unwanted particulates. This is our chance to put the final touches on the sauce. If it isn't thick enough, simmer on low heat for a little longer. If it isn't sweet enough, add in another tablespoon or two of sugar followed by a pinch of salt. This sauce should coat your tongue and you will feel the sweetness of the mango, the creaminess of the coconut, and the ginger gives it a slight savory spicy bite to make it the perfect topping for our fish. Now to contend with the rice, I'm tired of having some random vegetable with fish. It's already light and delicate, so it needs a base to stand on. Wash your rice, like seriously, wash your rice. I don't know why you wouldn't. And throw it straight into a pot at medium heat with olive oil. We want to extract all those warm and toasty notes from the rice before simmering. Follow it with some garlic powder, Mexican oregano, and chili powder. Continue stirring your rice and don't let anything burn or stick. We want the rice to start to turn translucent and light brown while infusing with the spices. Go ahead and add a pinch of salt followed by two parts water to the amount of rice you have. If you're feeling fancy, you can also use chicken stock here. Once the water has hit a rapid boil, cover the pot and let the rice simmer until cooked through. Once done, add roughly cut fresh cilantro to the rice and the juice of half a lime. The lime will cut through the savory and sweet flavors that we've been building up till now. Once again, add some salt to taste and now our rice is done. Now for the most important part, the fish. We can honestly use any flaky white fish that's out there like cod, but I decided to go with this fresh walleye that I found here. If you start with the whole filet, go ahead and cut yourself off some nice large pieces that we're going to now pan sear. This is how I cook fish. Add some oil to the skin and add as much salt as you would use on the entire fish on only the skin side. First, this will dry out the skin and make it crispy, giving contrasting textures. And also remember, when you cook, a lot of the seasoning is just going to fall off into the pan. That's going to make its way to the top of the fish anyway later on. Get a pan now ripping hot. The reason we don't use any other seasonings but salt at this stage is because they would burn immediately when touching this pan. Gently lay down the fish and then press down hard. You want to make sure that every square inch of that skin is in contact with the pan. Once your fish is cooked about halfway up, add a light dusting of garlic powder on top. You want to make sure that you've cooked on high heat on the skin side for about 3 minutes until it's nice and crisp. Once done, turn the temperature down to medium and then give the fish a flip. We're going to cook for about 2 more minutes on this side and then the fish will be done. We can now assemble. Pull out your pink flower shaped cookie cutter to mold your rice into a nice little circle. Lay the delicate fish on top skin side up so it doesn't lose its crisp and then just add a dollop of the mango sauce to complete the dish. 
You can then squeeze some lime over it, but I tend to like to top it with some lime zest and chiffonade mint leaves. The first bite is perfect. The salty, crisp skin juxtaposes the delicate fish. The addition of the mango sauce rounds out the flavor while leaving the faint perfume of mint on your nose. And the rice just adds that bit of body and weight that the fish just needs. Now, pour more mango sauce over like the monster you are and dig in. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and let me know what else would you do to make this even better.